Hello! If you're infuriated by the new Half-Life, this video is for you. Otherwise, you may or may not learn something new. Reading salty comment sections was very painful for me, and I hope I will reduce the amount of misguided people with this video. Pretty sure some YouTubers already made a video on this topic, it seems pretty obvious. But I haven't checked them, so sorry if I've repeated something you've already seen. As a disclaimer, I do not own a VR system. My PC is pretty damn bad, so I can't play the new Half-Life, and I'm a student, which makes it hard to get money. Even with that in mind, I made this video. In all honesty, I hope this will get enough views to let me buy a headset myself. Let's start with myths about VR itself, not the game. Myth 1. VR is expensive. My bet is. That is, if you're a student paying for his tuition, or if you have a really small wage, or maybe if you're a child with little pocket money. However, it's way more cheap than people make it out to be. VR headsets with controllers can be bought for as little as like 150 bucks on sale. And if your PC isn't VR compatible yet, you can buy an NVIDIA 1660 for around the same price. Or there's also some GPUs that are less powerful and cheaper but still can handle VR. You know, it's relatively cheap nowadays. Myth 2. VR isn't true immersion. Like, how can you get immersed in a game with just a screen in front of your eyes and two V remotes in your hands? That seems pretty stupid. Well, almost all people who say that actually never tried VR, or just used very cheap uh, headsets. VR offers immersion that's nearly as good as experiencing the game in real life. Some people reported they needed some time to get used to it and stop being aware of the real life surroundings all the time, but it's pretty rare. Try going to a local VR launch and experience it yourself, you don't need to buy it first. Myth 2 Episode 1. You can't play for a long time because of motion sickness. Well, at first it's true, but as you get used to it, the motion sickness reduces more and more, and eventually it goes away completely. Just stop playing where, when you feel motion sickness. Not to mention that, in fact, there's two motion systems, teleportation and locomotion. With teleportation being way less likely to cause motion sickness, even for first-time players. After all, even with 3D games, uh, some people get motion sickness from them. I myself used to get motion sickness from one game, and it even eventually went away, in like a week or so. Myth 2 Episode 2 VR is dead. If you're talking about the games, you're absolutely wrong. It's obvious that it has way less good games and games overall compared to PC. I mean, PC has been around for like what, a few decades? And VR has been around for a few years. However, VR offers amazing immersion, and the library, while being less than pancake game library, is still quite big. Some people say they simply can't enjoy pancake games as much anymore due to how immersive VR is. To show you a few examples of high quality VR titles, except Half-Life Alex of course, uh, soon to be released Boundworks, Medal of Honor and Sniper Elite games, uh, probably the most well-known VR game Beat Saber, Pebble of VR, which basically lets you experience Counter-Strike in VR, an RPG Asgard's Wrath, Stormland and way more or less are known games that are still incredibly fun, as well as Ports like Skyrim, Elite Dangerous, The Forest, Payday 2. VR player base is indeed small, but that's exactly why Valve decided to make this title. Now let's move on to myths about the game itself. Myth 1. It will have a non-VR mode. Well, some enthusiasts will probably mod it to have support for non-VR systems. However, given the immersion VR provides, it will simply be detrimental to the game experience. Like, highly detrimental. VR games don't work as well in non-VR, because of all the possible interactions. 
To give you an example, 10 years ago Gabe Newell said the new Half-Life game will have sign language, and while a selection wheel like in Portal 2 can be implemented, adapt it will be as fun. Similarly, with VR you can take cover, shoot at any direction, have realistic gun handling and probably way more than I could ever think of. The game will have gravity gloves, it will probably be a more fun version of gravity gun for VR. I can't imagine it being as fun without VR. The game is made specifically for VR and naturally it will have the features to make it the most fun VR experience possible and, and it definitely wouldn't be considered a really good outstanding game for conventional systems. Myth 2. It's basically Half-Life 3. No, it isn't. It's a prequel to Half-Life 3. It will not show you the conclusion to the main story. It will only focus on the gap between Half-Life 1 and 2. Myth 2 Episode 1. It's a short tech demo that will be over in an hour of gameplay, or around that. You can say that all you want until Thursday comes. In all seriousness, Tyler McWitter said this game will be a Half-Life 2 prequel about Alex a year ago. Given that information, I find it really hard to believe he's been wrong about it being an experience with at least 10 hours of gameplay and the new Game Plus system. Myth 2 Episode 2. It will only support Valve Index. No, it will support every Steam VR headset. In fact, it has been announced earlier this year around the release of Valve Index but he, the name has been revealed only now. And Steamware headset is basically any headset. Valve has always been open about this kind of stuff. I mean, they support Linux and all that. With Alex, it's made to push Index or... Maybe it's made to counter Epic Games or whatever. No, it's made to push VR. It's a good, a really good and outstanding and amazing, the best ever probably, VR game. It's made to push VR. Index is made to push VR as well. Index is setting a standard of good VR gear and Half-Life is setting the standard of a good VR game. If they wanted to sell more headsets, they would probably design cheaper options or made it available in more, more countries. Half-Life franchise has always been about pushing the boundaries of technology. You can easily say both Half-Life and half life 2 revolutionized the games industry. This seems like a good time to show you some historic reference on Valve, VR and Half-Life, to prove that it's not enough to tell. And it goes back to the time Episode 3 was in development. Valve has always been jealous of Nintendo. After all, they make both hardware and games which allows them to give you the best experience by making hardware for games, not the other way around. During the time they were working on episode 3, they started thinking about ways to give the players more ways to immerse themselves into the game. In 2007, David Speyer mentioned really ambitious plans for episode 3. The first thing they patented in 2009 was using biofeedback systems for games. Around the same time, Gabe Newell mentioned he wants to build the technology to implement sign language in the new Half-Life game. So, uh, the idea, is it before Alex met Gordon Freeman? This is only for people who understand Half-Life. But she had a crush on someone who was hearing impaired. So she taught Dog how to sign so she could practice. And even though she's, you know, if something happened, maybe that the, the person is off fighting the contact someplace else. But that's why she and Dog would start signing with each other when they wanted to communicate without making noise or communicate without other people knowing. So that's an idea of adding, you know, starting to uh, bring signing into our games and give us the excuse to build the technologies to build the technology for something. The most important thing with the game is to capture the deaf, both hearing and deaf emotions by using facial expression in the game. Now time skip to 2013. Oculus Rift has been shown to the public. It's unknown whether Valve researched VR independently before it, but the fact is 
by 2013, they've done a lot of research and filed the first patents. I'm pretty sure that by the time they clearly want to make the next Half-Life game a VR title. Since then, Valve has always been a major contributor to the VR industry. Valve has said a lot about VR and Half-Life in a roundabout way over the years. That they experiment a lot, that they want to increase players' emotional spectrum, that they realize people are angry about the long wait and think they will like the end product. That Half-Life is going through lots of twists and turns that would drive people crazy even more than the wait. And indeed, pretty sure people would be enraged to hear about a lot of what they've been through considering some are already enraged about the end product. In conclusion, they aren't making the game for the 1%. If you can afford a PC, you usually can afford a VR headset. Valve always tried to revolutionize the game industry, and they plan to do it once again with the new Half-Life title. I'm excited for the future of the VR industry, and I'm excited for the new Half-Life game. Their move is no different from how consoles have exclusive games, except you don't even have to buy their headset, you have lots of options available, so they only move the technology forward, not their products. Leave a like if you like this video, leave a dislike if you dislike this video, comment if you have comments or questions. It seems so busy, yet people always forget it. Bye!